I am partnered with my good friends at Crown & Caliber. These guys have helped over 30,000 people buy and sell watches. Really, there is no better place to buy or sell a watch. They've got articles, blog posts, and videos on their YouTube channel that you should totally check out if you're into watches. Uh, and if you're not into watches, you should watch this episode because we're going to be talking about classic cocktails. They asked me to pair up some watches with some cocktails. Uh, try to complement the watch with the drink, and that's exactly what we're gonna do today. So, call it Watch Tales. Uh, we're gonna talk about a little bit about watches, but mostly about cocktails. You ever wondered what drink goes with a Rolex Sea Dweller or an Omega Speedmaster? This is the episode of How to Drink that will tell you that. You haven't been wondering about that? It's just me? Okay. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get things started with a Rolex Sea Dweller. Uh, what the heck is a Rolex Sea Dweller? Well, if you've heard of a Rolex Submariner, and maybe you haven't, maybe you haven't, it's a diving watch. It's for swimming deep. Actually, a lot deeper than you can probably dive. It goes down to, uh, you know, 1,220 meters, 4,000 feet. So I think that you'd be like putty at that point, unless you were in like some kind of a armored up newt suit or submarine or something. It's built for saturation diving. It's got a helium escape valve on there. Helium is something that if it builds up inside of a watch and can't get out, uh, will break it at those kinds of depths. Most people are only gonna ever dive to 40 or 60 meters at the deepest. So why would you build a watch that can go to 1200? Uh, the answer is because you can. When I think about scuba diving, I think about Jacques Cousteau. So I'm thinking about how am I gonna pair up this watch with a cocktail uh, that you can actually order. And I looked into what Jacques Cousteau drank and I couldn't find any information on that. But then I thought about Steve Zissou, the fictional Zach Cousteau. And what does he drink? Hey, intern, give me a Campari, will you? On the rocks. Which is almost a, an Americano. Um, and I think that if he had a better intern on his boat, he might have ordered an Americano. What is an Americano? It is a highball, it's an aperitif, it is a bright, refreshing, classic um, cocktail that you should be able to order at any decent cocktail bar, and which will look phenomenal in the hand that wears a Rolex Sea Dweller. This is a bit tongue-in-cheek, but go with me here, folks, go with me here, folks. We're gonna build it in the glass, we're gonna build it in this highball glass. I'm gonna place my ice in the glass. Your ice probably isn't a perfectly rectangular crystalline like mine, but whatever. Put that in the glass and we will build upon that. Uh, so again, an Americano. We need one and a half ounces of Campari, just like Steve Zissou needed a Campari on the rocks. I, I just gotta pause and say like, just Campari on the rocks? That's, I mean, I'd make a spritz out of it at least. That's like, Right over the top there. What is Campari? Campari is a bitter aperitif uh, comprised of orange peels and things like that. Um, it is very, very bitter. So for some people don't like it, but with an Americano, we moderate that with a bit of sweet vermouth. And I'm using a particularly sweet vermouth here with Caracano Antica. This has a lot of vanilla notes in it that will pair, I think, really lovely with that orange. You think orange and vanilla. Think about a creamsicle or something like that. When I build a highball in the glass like this, or a, uh, um, a Collins even, I like to give it a stir to chill in the glass with its ice. But before you add seltzer, if you add seltzer before you stir it, of course you're gonna run it flat. That's not cool. A little seltzer. And another quick jostling of the spoon up and down, just to incorporate it. And you can see the kind of um, interaction zones occurring between the Campari, which has some sweetness in it, and the seltzer. As they dilute, they kind of commingle in you can visually, it's, visual, it's visible in the glass, so you'll know when you've done. We're gonna garnish that with an orange twist. <sighs> Give it a little twist there. Boop, boop. Just like that. And we can 
drop a straw in it. And this is an Americano. Oh, that's lovely. It's a, it's a wonderful Campari spritz with just the right balance of sweetness and bitterness to be a afternoon, um, maybe a brunch drink. Um, certainly something as a cooler, a nice, refreshing, bright, wake you up, pick me up with a little bit of alcohol in it. I think it's fantastic. And I think it pairs very nicely with this Rolex Sea Dweller. And I think Steve Zissou, and I hope Jacques Cousteau would agree. I get a lot of vanilla and orange and a nice, pleasantly acrid, bitter kind of note. It's a classic cocktail, you should know it. And thanks to the magic of editing, I'm now wearing a Omega Speedmaster. This is a Moonwatch edition. If you know anything about watches, you know, well, if you don't know anything about watches, the Omega Speedmaster is famous because it's the watch that went to the moon with Neil Armstrong. Uh, it's the only watch rated for space operations by NASA, which is quite the thing to uh, wear as a badge of honor, but not this exact one because the sapphire crystal in back in outer space could explode and apparently kill you, but the original moon watch of which this is a modern version of. And uh, Omega leans on that. They like to let people know that this is the moon watch, baby. So when I think about Speedmaster, I think about the moon, I think about moon, I think about Saturn V rockets and outer space on Saturn and the Saturn cocktail from 1967, uh, almost certainly named in honor of that. It seems like a no-brainer. We gotta do this Saturn cocktail. Uh, it's a little bit of a tiki drink, but not super complicated and also not rum-based, which is fun. So we're gonna need our cocktail shaker. I need a quarter ounce of passion fruit juice. Passion fruit is powerful. Um, you don't need tons of that. I need a half an ounce of lemon juice. I need a quarter ounce of John D. Taylor's Velvet Falernum. There's really no substitute for this um, unless you're gonna get into making your own Falernum. And then of course there's variability to consider. Um, this is a rum-based liqueur. I need a half an ounce of Orgeau, which I will pour from this unusual bottle. And I need one and a half ounces of gin. Next, I'm going to add some ice to my tin. Uh, I'm gonna crack all of my ice, and I'm gonna crack it up pretty much. In fact, you might even wanna build this drink in a blender. I'm opting for a shaken version here because I like something that's a little bit less like a frappe. It's just a personal preference. If you wanted to frappe this drink and make it into a blended drink, it's a totally valid way to do it. I'm gonna take two ice cubes. I'm gonna crack both in this case. Uh, so when you have a chronometer on your watch, on your wrist, you tend to want to start timing everything, uh, even though the cool person would say, no, I'm just going to time things, I need to know if I'm So that was a 30-second uh, shake. Um, I'm not that cool. I'm, I'm a total dork. I just want to time everything we work. And we're going to open pour this. And we're gonna garnish that with a cherry, and I mean a fresh cherry. Ideally, it would be pitted, mine are not pitted, but you know, life will continue. I'm gonna pull a long, fat ribbon of lime, maybe even a full circle of it. And then I'm gonna take my knife, and I'm gonna trim up the edge so it's nice and sharp. There we go, Saturn and its ring, and the Saturn cocktail. Give that a sip. Ooh, that. That is delicious. That has a perfect rum and like Christmas spice. Um, what does it come in with? Oh man, like you almost get grapefruit in there, which is kind of weird because there's no grapefruit, but that lime and passion fruit combo, I'm sorry, that lemon and passion fruit combo uh, really kind of almost add up to grapefruit, but not quite with that velvet falernum coming in. Oh man, that's good. The gin, uh, you don't get a lot of juniper in this, but that's okay, you're not missing it. Man, that is freaking 
That's a cool drink. I could drink this all day. It is very pleasantly sweet and nutty and citrusy. And it's just a wonderful drink. I like this a lot. So there we have our watch and cocktail pairing. We put the Sea Dweller with Steve Zissou's Americano. And of course, the Speedmaster with the drink of the space age, the Saturn cocktail, a delicious and unbelievable good drink. It was super duper good. And I hope you've enjoyed this first episode of Watch Tales. Hey, if you want to know more about uh, watches, you should definitely check out Crown and Caliber. They've got a YouTube channel that is very much deserving of your subscription. The link is in a pinned comment right below me. Go down there and check it out. But hey, if you like how to drink, you gotta join the Ding Dong Gang by ring a ding dang dong that ding dong bell. That means you subscribe and turn on notifications. That means you click it and you click it again. Because if you don't do that, you won't know when there's a new episode of How to Drink, which coincidentally is Tuesdays and Fridays. According to this, I did this episode at 270 miles per hour. See you guys next week.